precious blessing and love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, heart dwellers. I've been led to revise the binding prayer. Oh, there's been a couple things on my mind. There have been a few occasions when it didn't work to get rid of what was plaguing us. There's been more feedback from our family, our heart dwellers family and volunteers and prayer warriors about things that needed to be strengthened. And I, I really felt this morning that the Lord wanted me to revise this prayer and share it with you so that you could have more protection than we've had in the past. So I'm going to go over a few points with you and then I'm going to make a separate video right after this with just the binding prayer on it so you don't have to listen to all this <laughs> explanation every time you want to use the binding prayer. Okay, so the first thing is to forgive and bless our enemies from the heart. Oh, this is so important. I can't tell you how many times the Lord has protected us when we forgave people who were working against us. Not only has He protected us, but He's chastised them. Not that I'm praying for a chastisement, but I remember one time on the mountain we had some Satanists that cursed a horse, and our horse unfortunately did die. Uh, there was an open door there with one of the people on the property. Then as we went back and looked at the situation, well, about a month later, the people who had done that to our horse came and told us that they had lost their favorite horse. And it, it's like you just can't, you can't attack a Christian who is loving and caring and praying for you and get away with it scot-free. There's going to be retribution. We don't pray for retribution. We pray for blessing. But the Lord uh, is also interested in the salvation of their souls. And what goes around comes around. Now some of you might disagree with me on this uh, curse landing on, a, on the horse up there. But the Lord made it clear that there was a serious deceptive open door going on. And it was one of the things that opened the door for this to happen. You know, the enemy waits in line. I mean, in the spirit, I see them wrapped around the block. <laughs> and almost as far as you can see, with a sheath of papers in their hands, the curses that they want to lay on us. And the Lord just does not allow it. But every once in a while, there's an open door. Or there's a situation where the, he allows a curse to land for a certain specific reason. So this is what we found in 30 years of ministry, that it can happen. So the first thing we want to do is forgive and bless our enemies from the heart. And that prayer is, Father, I forgive and bless from my heart those people who have chosen to be our enemies and pray that your love would heal and convert them. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now the reason I say those people instead of my enemies is because some of our enemies are demonic, and I'm not about to bless them. It's the people, the unsaved people that are practicing evil that we want to be blessed and we want to come to the Lord. Okay, and you will notice that I do not have a prayer of repentance at the beginning of the binding prayer this time. And that's because all of us daily, like the air we breathe, we need to repent daily for everything that we do that is offensive to the Lord. So repentance is a given here. That's why it's not mentioned. Okay, and then we entreat the Lord for His protection. Lord, you promised that no weapon formed against us would prosper. I humbly entreat you to fortify the globe of angelic protection surrounding us and to send your holy angels to make a complete sweep, removing every demon and evil practitioner, disabling every projection, cursed object, and device of evil, and fortifying this globe beyond the ability of the enemy to penetrate sealing off every portal, air, earth, fire, water, and interdimensional. 
Now, to explain this to you and to break down, first of all, we, we address the elements because fire is the electricity and things can enter through the portal of fire. They most definitely can. They can enter through the portal of water. They can come up from the earth and they can be sent through the air. So we mention those things as well as interdimensional things. We mention these forces and we pray against evil entering through these forces deliberately. I know the ancient Celts would do the same thing. As a matter of fact, some of their prayers include all the elements. And rather than having a dome of protection, we prefer to use a globe of protection so that nothing from under the earth can come up through the ground. And I begin by asking the holy angels to make a complete sweep and removing every demon and evil practitioner because people astral project onto the property and demons dwell. And so what we're asking the Lord to do here is to make a sweep, the angels to make a sweep through the globe of protection and to make sure that nothing evil stays here and to disable every projection that is aimed at us, to disable every cursed object placed on the property and every device of evil. So that's what that prayer is about. Lord, you promised that no weapon formed against us would prosper. I humbly entreat you to fortify the globe of angelic protection surrounding us and to send your holy angels to make a complete sweep, removing every demon, and evil practitioner and ones that might be astral projecting that kind of thing disabling every projection curse that object and device of evil and fortifying this globe beyond the ability of the enemy to penetrate sealing off every portal air earth fire water and interdimensional and then you have people who come and go off the property Please send your angels to stand guard and stop our enemies or cursed objects and forces from entering. And then we leave our angelic globe of protection to go out sometimes. I ask that this globe of angelic protection would be duplicated and cover all that pertains to us. Animals, volunteers, friends, with their families and resources, our cars, our house, wherever we go. Then, Father, please cover us and our families with the blood of Jesus, mind, body, soul, and spirit, and all that pertains to us and is necessary to our work. And this helps especially when uh, demonic influences try to upset people or cause misunderstanding. If the blood is covering them, it can't enter. Then I ask that every dark matter weapon aimed at us or anything pertaining to us our volunteers, supporters, and families, animals, would immediately be destroyed by your holy angels. Uh, we want to protect our animals and our families because uh, they can get attacked and cause tremendous disorder because we have emotional attachments to our families, our animals, and our friends when they're under attack. That can cause a lot of disorder. So we're asking for protection for them. And then finally, Lord, deliver us from evil, from the tyranny of memories, and sever the cords of the wicked. The tyranny of memories is an important thing to remember because when the devil wants to throw us off balance, he sends memories of our past failures to us. He tries to saturate us in failure and what we've done wrong in our flaws and to draw our attention away from Jesus and from the work that he has for us to do. Those things have been forgiven. They're under the blood and they're gone. So if they're brought up, you have to know it's from a demon. The Lord doesn't bring those things up. The demons bring them up though. So here we're saying, Lord, deliver us from evil, from the tyranny of memories and sever the cords of the wicked any kind of cords that would be attached to us, our families, our volunteers, and our friends. All right. Now, you know those times when you feel 
so distant from the Lord. It's like you're praying to a brass wall or the heavens have just disappeared. Everything's bouncing off the ceiling. Well, those are times when the enemy is blocking, spiritually blocking us in some way. And I don't claim to have all the answers there, but I do want to share with you some of the suspects, <laughs> some of the suspects. Spirits of apathy, repulsion, isolation, and unbelief. And you know, one minute you can be on fire for the Lord, and the next day you can wake up in the morning and think, Ah, what am I doing? What am I thinking? I don't, I don't really know what this is all about. I mean, you can be in utter confusion. So let's add confusion to that mix. So here is a prayer against that particular force. Now mind you, if you've been running around at malls, surfing on the net, shopping, following the news, and just being busy and filling your mind with the world, it's not the devil who's causing that isolation. It's you being out of touch from all that busyness. So this prayer will not work in that situation. You've got to repent first. In the name of Jesus, I disable and bind every spiritual force causing confusion, repulsion to God, slander against God, apathy, isolation, and unbelief, along with their leaders, their backup, and retaliation. And later on, we'll deal with them going to the abyss. Now, one thing I wanted to cover was the spirits of deception, because that's a biggie. Um, when we're all trying to do the right thing and we get deceived, that's really hard. So, we're going to address that. In Jesus' name, I bind all Jezebel, lying, religious, Pharisee, bigotry, beguiling, hindering, deceiving, and seducing spirits sent against us, your backup pools, your leaders, and forces of retaliation, as well as all those who provoke every manner of sin against us. Okay, so here when we talk about Jezebel spirits, we're talking about spirits that are sent to hinder prophecy, hinder prophetic gifts, gifts of knowledge, and moving in the spirit. It's not just some woman trying to rise up and take authority. No, it's a spirit that suppresses the gifts of the spirit through different nefarious means. Okay, we also want to do away with lying spirits because they're constantly telling us lies. <laughs> Colin Burpo had mentioned that he saw demons on people's shoulders and his dad asked him, well, what are they doing? And he said, they're lying. They're telling them lies. I mean, all day long, if you're sensitive spiritually, you're going to hear lies. So we want to bind that and also be able to recognize it. A religious spirit that finds fault with other people or finds fault and makes an argument out of doctrine. A Pharisee, a bigot. So a Pharisee is someone who's very legalistic and is picking you apart with a microscope trying to find your flaws and totally missing the forest for the trees. Bigotry, that's opinions, pride and opinions about other people, judgment. That's one of the fastest ways to get clobbered by the demons is to have some kind of opinion about another person. Oh boy, that is just a given. You go ahead and um, someone comes in and they say, you know, so-and-so is this and so-and-so is that. They just walked in and opened that door of protection for the demons to flood in. And it's personal opinion most of the time. 99% of the time it's not knowledge. It's personal opinion and condemnation. And I have to tell you, I feel badly for people who have, you know, offhandedly attacked us for nothing because I know what happens when you attack other people. Your protection comes down and then the Lord allows the demons to sift you. So be careful with that, guys. Beguiling. You know, seducing. Trying to... Um, throw you off course by clever arguments and things that you want to hear. 
vanity and building you up and tearing other people down. Woof. That's a beguiling spirit. A hindering spirit saying, you can't do that. Oh, no one can do that. Oh, God's not going to help you with that. Hindering and deceiving. Oh, you know, so-and-so is talking about you right now. And, and tries to get you to act against or judge someone else. Big open door. And seducing spirits. Oh, don't you think you could be more effective if you did this instead of what the Lord's telling you to do? I mean, this would be so much more effective for the Lord. That's a seducing spirit. And then we want to be sure to pray against their backup pools because once you've bound them, they're going to send reinforcements. So you bind that backup pool, and you bind the leaders that sent them, and retaliation uh, that provoked every manner of sin against us. Now, I've made a change in this particular prayer here uh, that I'd like you to just take note of. There was a whole list of preferences of different things, you know, sickness, infirmity, mental illness, a bunch of different things. So what I did is I put that list at the end of the new binding prayer and you can pick and choose out of that list to find the things that you can feel are opposing you and put that in this place. So it says in Jesus mighty name I disable and bind and put your list in there. I've got on the prayer it's a parenthesis choose your personal preference from the list at the end and then the prayer continues I disable and bind these forces, your list, from acting against us, our volunteers, our friends, our pets, and our families. Now, just to make sure we covered everything, in the next line it says, In Jesus' name, I bind all forces of opposition, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, as well as all dark matter from affecting us, from sending reinforcements or retaliation, against our friends, volunteers, families, pets, resources, and in any way hindering us. And in Jesus' name that every demon force associated with or named in this entire binding prayer be dispatched by the holy angels to the pit, never to be released. Okay, now the next prayer down here, curses, hexes, spells, and strongholds. Here's a prayer I took from Francis McNutt and I added to it and he had a world-class deliverance ministry. He's retired now. But he uh, established a group that uh, delivers people and I remember once they prayed over me and they bound a spirit of stomach cancer because I've been having trouble with my stomach and I hadn't told anyone that I was having problems. And they broke that off of me, that curse. These are the words that he has found to be most effective. I break and forever disable every curse, hex, evil wish, spell, seal, link, restraint, assignment, devilish while, and stronghold against us in Jesus' name. For it is written that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And we say that three times because Francis McNutt said it three times. That was his advice. I don't know why he said it three times, but he had such an incredible reputation that I'm just going to take his word for it. And then I'm going to add to that, in parentheses underneath it, it says, generational curse and soul tie. Add this to the above prayer, maybe once a month or so. Next, healing from our sins and attacks. So, you know, guys, when we sin, it damages us. It damages others, and it damages us. And when we're attacked, we're damaged. So here we're entreating the Lord, uh, Holy Spirit. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would pass over our whole beings, body, soul, and spirit, with your glory, and increase and restore love for others, health, strength, vigor, courage, focus, faith, purity and wholeness, peace and joy to the places the enemy, the world, and our own flesh have defiled. Now that prayer is important because the longer you're a Christian, <laughs> the longer you're a human, the more times you're hurt. 
And when we're hurt, we tend to withdraw and our charity begins to cool down. So the first item on that list is to restore love for others because that's the most important thing that we need. We can be sick but love others and it's still powerful. We can be weak and love others and it's still powerful. We can have courage but if we don't love others it's useless. We can have focus and faith but without love it's not effective. Purity. We can have a pure heart, but no love. And we can be fractured and damaged rather than whole. We can have peace and joy, but no love for others. And some people might dispute that, and I might agree with you. <laughs> but the point is, without love, we're useless. We're like clanging gongs. So there you go. Restore love for others is the number one item on that list. Then health, strength, vigor, courage, focus, faith, purity of heart, wholeness, peace, and joy. To the places the enemy, the world, and our own flesh have defiled. So that's the reason for that prayer. And then I take the time, and you can do or not do this, but thank you, Jesus, for the power of your name. Lord, please cover and sanctify us with your blood to be conformed to you in humility, selflessness, charity, purity, obedience, and courage. Obedience is huge, just huge. Humility and obedience are huge. Well, you can cut some of the other things out if you want. And then the glory. <laughs> this real sweet Church of God lady sent us this prayer. I asked the Lord about it, and uh, you open the Bible promises to Holy Spirit. This was a prayer that was sent to us as a blessing. So I'm including it in here. That's favor. I speak divine and supernatural favor, double favor, additional favor, abundant favor and extended favor over us and all our works for the Lord. Amen. Okay, and then next, the glory. Lord, I humbly ask you to release the glory and protection that you sent with your people Israel. Fire in the midst of them wherever they went and to restore sevenfold all the enemy has stolen from us. And those are scriptural prayers uh, to be restored what the enemy has stolen. The Lord has promised that. But we humbly ask you to release the glory and protection that you sent with your people. This is interesting because Ezekiel just had a dream about this black cloud coming from the east and going to the west. And the Lord swooped down from heaven with all his angels. Uh, he swooped down in a white horse. This is a message from, I think, two or three days ago. And he came between us and the black force. So that's definitely glory coming in between us and evil. And then finally, the sweetest thing that you can ever say to Jesus, besides I love you, is I trust in you. And so we say that three times. And say it once if you want. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. I really do. And then after that at the end are the forces of opposition that you can choose your own personal items from. Fear of man, PTSD, codependent behavior, overwhelm, bullying. I mean, there's spirits behind all of these things. So you can say, you spirits that cause all these things. Panic, confusion, fight or flight, chemical and emotional response. And um, lying symptoms, lukewarmness, weakness, avarice, pride, rebellion. Those are pretty important. Spiritual deafness and dumbness. Twisted communication. Divination. Seduction. And then the final uh, sentence there, after you've chosen those, is, I declare all of you coming against us, your leaders and replacements, and those attached to or used by you, bound 
and permanently disabled in Jesus' holy name, never to return. Amen. Okay, well having said all of that, I have one last note to make, and that is your authority. You have this authority in the name of Jesus because you know him, because you belong to him, because you serve him, and you've given your life to him. So it's the same as if you would sign off on a check that you had authority in a banking account. All the money that you need is there in that banking account. You just have to sign off on that check and hand it to the cashier and the rest comes. And in the same way, you sign off on that prayer and you hand it to the Lord. And His power is what backs it up. But I've got to tell you, the intention has got to be there. The faith has got to be there. So when you pray this prayer, you can envision these different forces in your mind's eye, on the screen of your mind. You can envision these different forces and speak directly to them with complete and total confidence that they have to obey. And if you don't have that total confidence and that faith that they have to obey because of the name of Jesus, you're not going to get the same results. And to make it just a little bit more simple for us who live out in the country, I remember when we were having forest fires, uh, coyotes would come down into town, all, all the animals would run and move around and try and get away from the fire. But let's say you've got a cabin in the woods and the door's open and you're uh, enjoying the sunny day and taking it all in, and all of a sudden a coyote comes in and start lifting his leg on your kitchen cabinet. Are you going to just stand there? Or are you going to grab a broom and make him leave? That's what these are. Dirty dogs, dirty coyotes, and that broom is the power and authority of Christ, and you wield it at them until they are gone, and they don't have a choice because you're not giving them a choice. They have to go. So that said, pray with confidence, pray with intention, pray with focus. So that's the New Binding Prayer, guys, and that's the explanation behind it. The Lord bless you all, and send us your praise reports when, when this starts to work for you. Please, we'd love to hear that.